Welcome to episode six of Teach Me Tiger podcast. I love you, Greg. I love you guys. We, <laughs> we love you. Sorry. I love you, Sarah. <laughs> love you, I love you, Greg. <laughs> Hi, Tiger. Teach me, Tiger, how to kiss you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. didn't know we're airing this episode on naturopathic medicine week go to the canadian association of naturopathic doctors website for more information www.cand.ca hi you guys welcome to teach me tiger the show where you ask us the questions and we call in our smartest pals to help us answer them this week we have a real expert <gasps> We're your favorite neighbors, Melody Starkweather and Sarah Wright. Thanks for coming, you guys. Happy you're here. We're happy you're here. So, Mel, how was your week? My week was terrible, Sarah. (laughs) Yeah, no, it was terrible. Uh, Okay, so we had the weekend. Yeah. Kids, home, two days in a row. You know how it is. And then Monday came around and it was a fucking snow day. (sighs) Snow day. In April, like April 17th or something crazy. Ice storm. Yeah. It was so bad that I didn't want to just drive my daughter in. Yeah, which is what you do. Yes, I do. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, so snow day Monday, and then my daughter was sick on Tuesday, so she was up in the night telling me she wasn't feeling good, and she felt like she was going to barf, and Mm. she needed medicine, and blah, blah, blah. And then Tuesday in the morning, like, it was just undeniable. I couldn't send her to school, so I kept her home. Uh, and then on Tuesday, my friend took Robin to playgroup in the morning. Our power went out at about eight thirty. Oh yeah! So it was out all day. Chris accidentally flushed the toilet a couple of times. So we had no running water, and it was out for ten hours. Ten hours! Oh my god! So Robin came home from playgroup and barfed all down the front of my shirt, and then oh. barfed all over the floor. Oh no! And we had no water oh my god (laughs) um and i had a sick kid at home and all she wanted to do was watch a movie she wouldn't really do anything else she just whined and complained all day about how we had no power oh no so the next night (laughs) robin barfs in the bed with me i change the sheets holly comes in projectile vomits all over the bed and the floor and the fucking power was out again no (laughs) i legitimately had to ask myself what which we ran over. And where it? is she? How do we reverse the curse? Yeah. Is it Mercury retrograde? Oh my what God. the fuck? <laughs> That's a fucking nightmare, Mel. It was. And then I got the flu. So. And you guys had a thing with your power where, because in case you didn't know, we're your favorite neighbors. Um, <laughs> and our power went out too, but it was only out for like until the afternoon. And you guys had a thing where you're. What happened? Um, Your power was out forever. On our meter, there's a we have some sort of add-on that the previous homeowners slash builders put on there where you can plug a generator. It's a generator link, I think. Mm-hmm. You plug a generator in, and it'll power the whole house. Okay. Good to know. In case of and that blew. So Hydro was refusing to come out and said we had to call an electrician, and then he came in and said, actually, you have to call Hydro because it's their equipment that failed. Oh. And then he called, and like bitched them out on the phone about how Whoa. this is an emergency service. This guy's got a wife and two small kids and yeah. he made them come within like two hours. <gasps> what a hero. Chris gave him five stars on Yelp or whatever, which he doesn't do very freely. Five stars on Yelp. Five stars. Yep. Yelp. Yep. Yep. Yelp. Yelp. That's five times. Anyway. Yeah. Monster illness, but Hey, the snow's melting. The snow is melting. The sun is shining. Our kids are outside. It's amazing. It's Don't dream. you love having your kids outside? I love it. Which which brings me to to my topic. So when we bought the house, it had a, a semi in ground pool. That was a glorious summer. The it first was. summer, it was so great. We <laughs> spam a lot. It was beautiful, but uh, we had to get rid of it because my kids would drown. 
Because they're wild animals and they can't be contained even in a six foot tall fence. Nope. They were climbing over the fence. Yeah. And I was only like four or six at the time. Anyway. And uh, and it was just so expensive and hard to clean. Whatever. Long yeah. story short. <laughs> long story long. <laughs> we, we ripped the pool out. Sarah oh, ripped it out. It I, was like a one man job. Sarah went out there and ripped it out with the saws all. I did. I kind of went crazy. Yeah. yeah. Jacob fell in the pool and it like it it sprang me to action. Yeah. Well, that's what really did it, right? Yeah. Um, and you got that super mom power with your saws all. Instead of lifting a car, you're lifting a fucking pool. Yeah. I lifted a pool. Yeah. So whatever. She's so strong. I'm so strong and amazing. But it turns out it's all sand. So now we have this huge sand pit. Uh, it's giant. It's like, fuck, I don't know, the size of a front yard's worth of just sand pit. And I like to call it our post-apocalyptic theme park. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it's sand and it's like old pieces of wood with rusty nails. Like, it's the worst. And the kids love it. They love it so much. They spend hours in there. And it's great. Like, you know, it's uh, teaching them about safety. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, look out. That's a rusty nail. Don't step on that rusty nail, kids. Yeah. Or else it's your problem because you should I be wearing you. shoes. I warned you. <laughs> yeah. So my kids have been spending a lot of time in there, which also makes it like my house is a beach house. Mm. It's just filled with fucking sand all the time. I don't live on the beach. No. There's no water for me to luxurate near. It's just a nice shitty post apocalyptic theme park in the backyard full of rusty nails. But you get a pretty sweet little puddle back there, big <laughs> giant puddle. Actually. I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's so big that the huge pieces of decking that are out back there float yeah. in the cesspool. But uh, because it's all sand, it uh, like disappears really fast. Oh, okay. Like sinks it. You can't see what I'm doing with my hands. I'm making sinking into the ground fingers. It, it reminds me of the exactly. So yes. Tell so, me all about it, Sarah. Tell me. <laughs> so we're about to record on location for the first time. On location. Location. Excuse me? We're about to record on location. On location. For the first time ever. First time ever. In Kempville. In Kempville. We're so excited. (laughs) We're so excited. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. So it means that we have a really big day. We have to get our kids off to school, get in the vehicles, drive Mm -hmm. out to Kville, set up. It's going to be really intense. We're going to do it. With a real doctor. Mm -hmm. We're going to go see a doctor man. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Melody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on our show. Yay. We're on location in Kempville. We're on location, you guys, in Sean's beautiful office in Kempville. It's beautiful in here. There's a beautiful window, lots of lovely light. Out of my basement. Yeah, we're out of Melody's basement. (laughs) You freed us from the basement, Sean. Okay, welcome to Kempville. Thank you. (laughs) My mom likes to call it Kville. Kville. K-Town. She calls it Kville. I don't like it because it makes me think of like a drug town. (laughs) Going to K Town to get some dope. That's what. Get some K. To get some special K. Mm. Don't do drugs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Speaking of <laughs> drugs, <laughs> we have Sean, Dr. Sean Ikimovich. He's our naturopathic doctor, and he's amazing. He's our he's our best doctor pal. Hi, Thanks, Sean. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Did I say everything right? Yeah, that's good. Great, Ikimovich. Ukrainian, right? Ukrainian. Yeah. yeah. I remember my first visit. I saw your mug, and it had Ukrainian. Oh, that's right. I still have that mug. Yeah, those were the days, huh? (laughs) Ten years. Sean and I met ten years ago. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you're my oldest friend. (laughs) Long time ago. Wow. (laughs) And I don't have a baby with me today. My baby is being watched by my lovely sister. Thanks, Allie. Uh, We drove here with an empty back seat. Wow. Yeah. We're free. How did it feel? Really good. (laughs) By your fourth kid, you're like, see you, sucker. I'm out. (laughs) See you later. Um, Okay, so, Sean, 
we're here to talk to you today. And um, I thought we'd start by having you tell us a little bit about naturopathic medicine. Why, why do people come here to see you? Well, I'll give you a little background first of all. So naturopathic medicine, it's a distinct system of medicine, um, primary health care, that blends uh, modern scientific techniques and knowledge, mm-hmm. and as well as using traditional methods of healing. So naturopathic medicine, you could say it's defined by its principles. Okay. First, do no harm. Right. So naturopathic doctors are always striving to minimize any side effects or harm through the treatments we we provide. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we are guided by the principle of uh, working or cooperating with the healing power of nature. Right. So your body has the ability to heal itself. So simple example, you get a cut in your finger. You Mm -hmm. don't have to think about it. It'll heal itself up. Sometimes you just need a bit of a boost. Sounds very holistic. We, you know, we treat the whole person. So we're not just looking at a symptom, you know, say if it's abdominal pain, we don't just focus on the digestive organs. Obviously, we want to assess that thoroughly. But then we say, okay, how are your emotions? How's stress in your life? You right. know, what's your diet like? What's your exercise? Are there any other factors? Health history. So we're looking at that literally the whole person, all the pieces, mind, body, spirit to restore health. Cool. So uh, naturopathic doctors are regulated in Ontario uh, by the Ministry of Health. So uh, we're one of 26 regulated health professions. And we have one of the largest scopes of practice. Uh, we can communicate a diagnosis. We can order lab tests. Um, right. uh, yeah, like you can get your blood work done and stuff. Yeah, you can order, you know, quite a number of lab tests, other kinds of testing. So, you know, there's a really wide range of, of diagnostics and and treatments that naturopaths have access to. And therefore, you know, we can treat quite a wide variety of things, either acute or chronic illness. Yeah. Compacted but, ear wax. Sure. <laughs> That's yeah. me. That's me, folks. <laughs> I can get yes. rid of that for you. Yeah. <laughs> He'll clean your ears out. It's amazing. That's right. We so can look- fresh. Yeah. <laughs> I can hear so much now. Hello. <laughs> Actually, my husband had a, a great experience in Thailand having his ears cleaned out. Oh, okay. Tell the story. It's funny. <laughs> uh, we were on our honeymoon. I was very pregnant. <laughs> yeah. We planned the, just so you know, the wedding wasn't a reaction to the pregnancy. Whatever. It was a, there was a shot. <laughs> I was holding the shotgun to his head. Chris, you bastard. Um, but we were on honeymoon in Thailand, and I was like dead to the world asleep. And I hear a knock at our hotel room door, and he was at the hotel room door. He didn't have his key. I believe he didn't have shoes on. He didn't have his glasses on. And I opened the door and said, Chris, what's going on? He said, I'm in ecstasy. I just went to the hospital across the road. And I can hear everything. We'd gone scuba diving. Correction snorkeling. <laughs> And he has really hard wax, and the water had gotten in behind and oh, dear. caused some problems. But okay. Yeah. It was very inexpensive also. <laughs> very affordable. <laughs> but really nerve-wracking to wake up in the middle of the night in Thailand. That's someone at your door. And yeah. Chris missing. Yeah. WTF, Chris. Where are your glasses? What doesn't happen? matter. I'm great. <laughs> I, can hear. I don't need to see anymore because my sense of hearing <laughs> is so heightened. I was going to say smell. Ooh. Are we going to play the icebreakers game? Roll up up your sleeves, sleeves, pull up up your socks, socks, reach on into Melody's box. Icebreakers. So we have this game, the Icebreakers game, where you pick a couple of questions out of a box. Oh, goodness. (laughs) (laughs) We have so many jokes that go along with this that we won't. Let's get silly. We won't put you through. You get to reach into Mel's box live on air. All right. Hey, Chris, reach into my box. Oh, boy. (laughs) She's reached into Mel's box and now she's juicy and open. <laughs> Reach into my box. Oh, baby. Booby boo. Ooh. Can we all answer this? Actually, one he reached into Sarah's box that time. <laughs> <laughs> wink. Winky winky. First time for everything. <laughs> all right. Oh my god. This is this is not silly. When you die, what do you want to be remembered for? You're fiddle playing, right? Sure. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. Wow. Let's say joie de vivre. Okay. You know, food, nice. music, travel, fun. You know, that's really. That's great. That's really what I like. You know, and, and my gardens. And your gardens. My flower gardens. Ah, I've never seen your flower gardens. Okay, come on. Let's talk summer. gardens afterwards. I would sure. love to. I have garden questions. We'll do this after the show. He's your oldest friend and you've never seen his garden. I know. So. <laughs> All right, next All right. question. 
Oh, yes. This is an oldie, but a goodie. Okay. <laughs> what is your sign and what does that say about you? My sign's a Leo. We're talking astrology, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Leo. Courageous, bold, you know, going against the grain. Yeah. So I think that's partly why I do what I do. It's uh, a little out there. It's and good- do you like long walks on the beach or... You know. Oh, I like long walks. I rarely get to the Leo. beach. I'm a Leo. I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> um, but, you know, passionate. I like things intensely, I think. Cool. I think I, yeah. Like your joie de vie. The it joie fits. de vie, it you suits. know, music, and uh, me and Mick Jagger share the same birthday. Do you really? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, that's that's cool. You're that's why you're wearing leather. leather pants today. That's right. Right. I love, <laughs> just, love rock and roll. <laughs> just so everybody knows, Sean's in leather pants. <laughs> And there's so many hankies hanging from your microphone right now. <laughs> I guess he doesn't. He probably doesn't call them hankies. Eh? It turns out all this time that Mick Jagger's just got like a bad sinus infection right, all right. the time. He just keeps <laughs> these hankies there. Is it, is it Mick Jagger or is it Keith Richards? Correction, it's Steven Tyler. Oh, well, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> you know that all my references are wrong? It's my shtick. It, it must be your sign. Really, it's your it's sign. my. I'm a Taurus. Um, Notoriously wrong. Notoriously <laughs> wrong. Yeah, great. Oh, one, more, one more. One more. more. Okay. Third time's a charm. All right. What sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise? I would take it so pervy. You would do that? Oh, totally. Everything. You know, I love the sound of a baby. Sleep breathing. Oh, that's such a nice sound. <laughs> Heavily but quietly breathing. So yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Still alive. Love yeah. that. Exactly. <laughs> I like, um, you know, I like when it's raining on a, uh, on, at nighttime. So yeah. with, with the window open, mm. you know, it's just and maybe a little breeze rustling the walnut tree. Very peaceful. You're such a peaceful guy, Sean. Yeah. yeah. I'm really yeah. taking you there. Yeah, like I'm there. I can smell the rain coming in, that beautiful smell. That's right. But going back to Mick Jagger, I'd say, well, I like a good, crunchy electric guitar. Yeah. Rock and roll power chord. That's a good Speaking one. Speaking of, I wanted to ask you about yes. the fiddle. You play the fiddle? I play the fiddle, yeah. So do you play in bands? or uh, you- On and off. I, yeah. You know, there's musicians around town I play with. And over the years, have you know, had bands, everything from sort of a Quebecois trio, traditional music. Oh, fun. To, um, in high school, I had a five-piece Six piece rock and roll band. We did Jethro Tull and Van Morrison covers. Cool. Nice. We had a, a girl played flute really well. Our bass was a tuba. <laughs> that's, we, that's we were all in unique. the school band. But, right. <laughs> um, Perfect. So it was great. So I played trumpet and guitar and violin sometimes. Cool. Yeah. That and that's was, how that started. Well, that was one of my first bands. It was great. What but were you called? We were called Arnold's Lunchbox. Oh my God, I love it. And, you know, so given that we played like 60s music, mm-hmm. it was really our parents like loved us. Our peers were like, whatever. Whatever. Jethro Tull, whatever. But we were, brick. we were total nerds, so we were into it. Yeah. And that was great. And we opened for Valdi. That was like the mm-hmm. highlight of our who, career. Who? Canadian folk legend, Valdi. Valdi? Yeah, he played in Elmont at the elementary school for like a fundraiser, and cool. we were asked to be the opening act. Whoa. Nice. So it's one of, Everything's the, been one of the highlights there. of my career. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, cool. so no, but played played on and off. And I used to good. do French-Canadian step dancing. Ooh. Yeah. I didn't bring my shoes with me. But right. Well, we'll have to. We thought we could maybe, <laughs> like, it'd be fun to do on air. Yeah. yeah well, next, <laughs> I haven't step done dancers, Next time. But... Yeah, no, it's good. I'll practice for next time. I just played at a you know French school's Cabana Sick last week. Oh, cool! So we were playing fiddle music. Nice. It was good. I love fiddle so music. great. Yeah, yeah. fiddle and banjo are my favorite instruments, and mm-hmm. then guitar. Mm-hmm. 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 Mandolin last. Sorry, Greg. Oh, does Greg play the mandolin? Oh, I hate the mandolin. Oh, really? <laughs> it drives me fucking nuts. You know what? And. All the practicing, like when you're practicing guitar or practicing banjo, I don't know about the fiddle. I've never lived with a fiddle player, Mm -hmm. but practice guitar and banjo still sounds really nice. Like it's like still good, but practice mandolin is so obnoxious. And there's all these like, um, castle tunes, like, like you're in a fucking castle Mm -hmm. and I hate that. And that's on the mandolin and it makes me crazy. Hmm. Like a sweet mandolin solo in bluegrass music. Right. That's great. But just 
Fucking castle mandolin. Ugh. That's how I used to feel about my brother practicing his electric guitar. Jimi Hendrix. Oh. Nonstop. Uh, I love Hendrix, door. but yeah, man, would, <laughs> practicing Hendrix solos. Yeah. Imagine practicing Grateful Dead solos. Oh, Things dire could be straits. worse. <sighs> dire Straits. Yeah. Dire Straits. Over and over and over. I'm trying to remember what that song is. There's like one guitar solo that's. Salt in the Swing. Yeah, probably. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm anyway. trying to picture it in my head. You know it well. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Is that that? Yeah. It? Dun, dun, yeah. dun. I knew a reference. Doing? I knew a reference. That's great. <laughs> about the calendar. <laughs> I once had a guitar lesson on that song. Did you? Yeah, yeah. And did you? Did it go over well? Well, I could barely play. He's like, Do you know Sultan's a Swing? I'm like, uh, well, sure, I know that song. He's yeah. like, here's. And that was how I learned bar chords. Was playing the rhythm to Sultan's a Swing. No kidding. Yeah. I took Just, guitar lessons uh, briefly. But I would just go and hang out with the guitar teacher and smoke cigarettes mm-hmm. and talk about all the drugs I'd been doing. <laughs> and I didn't learn anything. And we took I took like two months of guitar lessons. Mm. And your once parents a week. were paying this kid? Yeah, my dad. I'm sorry, dad. Uh, <laughs> but it was a great place for me to go and, and talk about my life's problems. But the poor guy like was not uh, prepared to hear the hair curling stories I was sharing. Was this person a grown up? Like um <laughs> like a young yeah, it was like well, it was like a young like he's probably early twenties and I was like seventeen and like going through a pretty wild time and I'd be like, and then fucking this and I'm still high. Blah blah blah. And we I didn't learn Nothing anything. about this situation sounds appropriate. <laughs> it was I was inappropriate. I think I probably scarred him for life. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> Please. Oh my god. <laughs> Sean, I know there's a lot of myths still out there. Mm -hmm. You touched on one of them talking about how you guys, uh, naturopathic medicine, naturopathic doctors are regulated Mm -hmm. in Ontario. Um, But is there any common myths you hear or common misconceptions that you hear that you want to just dispel kind of off the top? Uh, well, sure. So, you know, one major thing, um, you know, people say, well, if it's not, a, you know, if it's not conventional medicine, there's no evidence, which is patently untrue. So you can go to PubMed, right, which is the, the online database for medical research. It's free. Anybody can, go, you know, search anything there and, you know, type in acupuncture, type in turmeric, type in fish oil, right? So that the reams of modern day research on nutraceuticals, nutritional supplements, on herbal medicines, on right. acupuncture, on homeopathic medicine, on you know, yoga, meditation, and the benefits and showing the efficacy of these. So anyone who says there's not evidence isn't looking for it. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, so some other myths are, well, if I go see a naturopath, he's going to take me off my medications, okay. so, which is untrue. So if we do a very thorough history, then you know, I'll ask, okay, what is your goal here? Is, you know, is your goal to reduce your medication load, which, you know, often it is for the person. They'll mm-hmm. say yes. If so, um, you know, my first job is to understand what the medications do and then understand what my own remedies do and to make sure things don't interact in a negative way. Okay. So we're trained in pharmacology as well as herbal pharmacology, you know, diet, nutrition. So the things that could potentially interact, we have to wear both hats and know. Okay. Right. And then as time goes on, it may be possible to um, wean down those medications. So in cooperation with the medical doctor or the pharmacist and do that safely. Or if someone says, you know what, this medication, I love it. It's working for me. I don't want to go off it. That's fine. We respect that. We work on other things. So, so that's a myth there. (laughs) Another one I've heard is, well, if I go see a naturopath, (laughs) they're going to put you on a gluten-free, dairy-free diet. They're Mm going to take all your favorite foods away, like across the board. Right. So um, I guess the answer is maybe if I, de- <laughs> if I determine that I'm here. one or two of those foods, you know, are giving you a problem, um, then it might be in your best interest to avoid them for a while. Right. Um, but there's no kind of across the board, one size fits all diet prescription. And You're not going to necessarily have to go. Not necessarily. Everything free. Not necessarily. And if someone is sensitive to something, it's always my goal to repair their digestion so that they're able to tolerate it in the future, not avoid it for life. Right. So you might so actually be able goal. to help someone have gluten or dairy. Right. Without the With health the, All impacts. the horrible things that happen. That's right. Oh, wow. I want you to enjoy food better. Right. Not take it away. 
I love that. I was wondering also with gluten, yes. with regards to gluten, are there benefits to a gluten-free diet if you don't have a gluten sensitivity? Because Great they're question. so popular. Everybody's yeah, well, I mean, gluten's just now. a protein in, in certain grains, right? So wheat's the predominant one. So you don't need gluten to survive, right? That protein. Now, when you say gluten-free diet, do you mean, you know, you're just kind of avoiding grain products with gluten? Or are you substituting bread with other bread-like substitutes, which usually have a lot of starch and other fillers right. and things? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that can be a source of a lot of carbohydrates and basically sugar, right? And it's not necessarily uh, very nutrient-dense. So. Right. So, yes, it can be healthy. Just don't substitute bread with a bunch Big of bread. other... Other bread. Like <laughs> cornstarch-based, right. you know, right. loaf. It but can be you, a lifestyle. You eat a salad instead of a sandwich. That's going to be good for you. Right. But so much of the gluten-free is like GF, TM, you know, like yeah. trademarked gluten-free. Absolutely. Uh, sure. If it's, just, you know, if it's just an excuse to eat, you know, gluten-free packaged cookies, like that's, you know... You're not really and it's so expensive. Healthier. Like I, sure. I have There's to eat gluten free, yep. and so you know I eat bread twice a week now. Right. I'll like make a sandwich, and it's gonna be worth it. Right? Or like those gluten free cookies I hide in my cupboard, <laughs> so no one else will eat them. Mm -hmm. You'd have like one a day instead of like I'm gonna eat a row of cookies tonight. I've never done that. Right. <sighs> I've only ever had two at a time. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, we never overindulge. <laughs> oh, hey, what I actually meant was I've only ever had two rows of cookies at a time. Hey <laughs> I thought you meant you'd only had two lovers at a time. <laughs> what am I, a delicate flower? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> I have so many questions. Okay. okay. Are you ready? Sure. So our friend Leslie, her daughter's going to kindergarten in the fall, and she's wondering if anything can be done to mitigate the onslaught of illness that's bound to follow. Mm -hmm. So is there anything you can recommend to boost her immune system or anything else to, <clears throat> you know, help her not catch everything that comes into the classroom? Right. Well, just, you know, it's the basic hygiene measures. So, you know, you teach hand washing, and while the weather's good, even in the wintertime, you know, keep your windows open at least a little bit. Get fresh air in the house okay. every day. Just to, you know, mitigate that germ load. But to get an infectious illness, we need two things. You need the germ and then you need, you know, the body to be receptive to the germ, right? So the terrain, we call it, right? So if, you're, if your body's a hostile place for the germ, meaning your immune system's awesome, you can be exposed and not get sick or not get as sick. So a few things to remember with young kids, um, you know, you want to, basically everyone in Canada by the wintertime will be deficient in vitamin D. Looking at uh, good quality probiotics are very helpful. And there's been quite a number of studies um, with kids in a daycare setting, just supplementing with probiotics. And there was a great study um, published in pediatrics in 2009 that showed kids given a probiotic that had two different types of good bacteria in it. Um, at significant reductions in antibiotic use, in fevers, in runny nose, in coughs, and missed days from school. Oh, wow. wow. Like, wow. So up to 80% improvement in some of those parameters. It was amazing. So you have to do that long term. So a good time to start a supplement regime would be, you know, even beginning of August. So before the school year starts, you're getting it into their system. So by the time they hit the classroom, um, you know, those things are in place and, and their body's working. But both vitamin D and, and probiotics have impacts on our immune system. And, and then, um, you know, there's some herbal remedies, things like echinacea and astragalus are two plants. Astragalus? Plant. Astragalus is um, a really good plant medicine for disease prevention, for prevention of respiratory things. So you okay. can take it on a daily basis. So those are some, you know, general specifics to think about and, and can make a huge difference. Would you recommend everyone just everyone take probiotics? Good so question. there's, it, that's a good question. Um, I mean, more and more research, right, is, is showing the importance of what we call the microbiome. You may have heard of that. So mm -hmm. basically, the number of bacteria oh, in us and on us, right, outnumber our own cells. It's about, so At wild. least 10 to 1, right? So it's like 100 trillion bacteria. 10 trillion of us 
so basically we're, we're just, made of bacteria we're made of bacteria we're made of we're just carriers us. of this stuff and they influence so cool. everything um but obviously most of them are concentrated in the gut and and you know we're just kind of the tip of the iceberg understanding the effect this has so you know hugely important and then of course you know in modern society and in western countries we use a lot of antibiotics mm-hmm. for lots of things so when you do that and you're not kind of repairing that bacterial balance, things get skewed and there can be a lot of side effects, uh, weakened immunity. So, all, you know, it's profound, the impact. So a really good book on this topic, it's called Missing Microbes okay. um, by Martin Blazer. He's a doctor in New York City. And uh, it's a really great accessible read, but it, it just looks at, you know, the hazards of kind of us mucking around and changing this balance. And it's, I think, one of the most important books anybody could read. They're okay. Really, Missing yeah. microbes. Missing microbes. Yeah. We'll it's put been the out a few up. years, but it's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Cool. So I didn't answer your question really. Should everyone take them? Again, it depends. It depends on your diet. If you're front loading and you haven't been on a lot of antibiotics, then, you know, you're sort of perpetuating a good, healthy flora or okay. bacteria balance. However, if you're someone who's been, you know, on antibiotics for, you know, many, many times or undergoing surgery or, or things like that, can be very useful. And I think the future of medicine is going to be, you know, we know that actually 700 to 1,000 different species of this bacteria and each actual species kind of does something unique. Right. So the future of medicine is saying, you've got this condition, you need more of this, this type bacteria. of bacteria. Cool. And that's starting to happen in, in medicine. Oh, so it's very cool. It's very cool. It's all about the gut. On that note, okay. we have a great uh, question from Susie. Right. Sarah, okay. you want to read that one? I do. Susie says... I've been thinking about the connection, which is probable in my opinion, between gut health and mental health. So if you've got something going on that isn't right, maybe start with how your gut's doing and, well, something that only Teach Me Tiger would talk about, your poop. What should a normal poop look like? Okay. A couple good questions there, A couple good questions. So, so yes, the gut can impact mental health. And again, that's a very expanding, rapidly expanding area of research showing that, yes, that is true. So for example, right, we think... Um, you know, depression, everyone's sort of serotonin. So mm-hmm. one of the little protein neurotransmitters in the brain, um, that's kind of the feel good, you know, chemical. Yeah. Well, 80% of the serotonin in our body is made in the gut tissue. What? Not what? the, not the brain. Excuse me. Holy schnitzel. So, for example. So, you know, the mind and the gut, um, are connected, right? So if you get, you know, you can see it work another way. So, okay, so if there's an imbalance in the gut, yes, it can impact mental health. You know, a lot of us are familiar with, say, you know, if we suffer anxiety, so like stage fright or something anticipatory, mm-hmm. right? It can affect your guts, diarrhea, yeah. cramping, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, so it you goes get both stressy, ways, right? Cramps. It's a two way street mm-hmm. through the nervous system, through the hormonal system, and the bacteria that's there. But certainly, um, if things get screwed up in the gut, it can certainly impact uh, mental health. And so this is coming out all the time. There's more and more data showing that this is true. Wow. So cool. Okay. So poop. I asked everyone about poop. It's important. Yeah, right? you do. Because we, <laughs> right, we're, we're not, we're not made of plexiglass. So you can't peer in and say, Hey, how are my insides doing? Right. So just to give you an appreciation of things, a small intestine, right? These things are like meters long, all coiled up, right? Mm-hmm. These tubes, in the intestinal tract. So if you, if you take the small intestine and kind of, you know, had it turn into like a flat sheet, like a rectangle. Yeah. The, the total surface area of just the small intestine, which is where most of our digestion and absorption of nutrients comes from. It's like the size of a tennis court. No way. Way. Shut Holy the front crap. door. So think about that. Just appreciate that size. It's like the size of a tennis court? That's like the the equivalent surface area that's then kind of turned into a tube with all these little folds on the inside. Holy shit. Okay. Oh, literally. Literally. So That's amazing. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot going on that's all kind of compacted in there. So, you know, um, so our poop is, you know, the end result of everything that's sort of been transported through that, you know, meters and meters of of piping, Mm -hmm. right? So, um, so things need to be broken down, right? So again, we can't see what's going on inside. So we need to see what's coming out and we can analyze that. That's sort of a proxy for, for internal health, right? So 
So normal poop is right brown color that comes from a pigment that's released in the gallbladder in the bile, right? And that's huh. just its natural color when it oxidizes. So if if you have poop that's kind of white or gray, that can indicate there's a blockage in the gallbladder. You're not getting that bile in there, so that's a serious problem. If it's black, that can indi- indicate, you know, it could be due to something you're eating, but it can indicate internal bleeding, okay. like higher up in the GI tract and that blood is oxidizing and turns black. So if it's black or tarry looking, get that checked out right away. If there's undigested food, right, that's a reflection of how strong our digestive tract is. So I mean, you know, nuts and seeds and corn, right, those are meant to resist digestive juices. But if it's, you know, other things and raw vegetables and whatever, um, then that indicates, you know, you might need some help on the upper end, breaking that stuff down. So it could be a pancreatic insufficiency, not enough stomach acid. Those are some things we think about. Um, so it shouldn't be hard, right? It shouldn't be watery and diarrhea. Um, what about, I've heard about like floating versus sinking. What's that all? So that can indicate, you know, again, the fat content, right? So if there's a lot of fat content, meaning your body's not breaking it down and absorbing that fat properly, um, then obviously, right. Fat's less dense than water. So the stool would tend to float. You're, you know, you're looking for at least one bowel movement a day, right? Going once a week is not normal, right? Okay. So there's there's a saying I read a long time ago. It's always stuck with me. I mean, you've heard you are what you eat, yeah. right? But we're also what we do not poop, right? Because okay. if things are sort of stuck in there and hanging around for a long time, things get reabsorbed. Things that are supposed to be waste shouldn't be reabsorbed. Right. It should be moving through and out. Okay. Um, cholesterol. How does cholesterol leave our body? We always hear about high cholesterol. The only way the cholesterol, once it's made, leaves our body is through the poop. Wow. Um, so one of one of the treatments for high cholesterol is making sure you've got enough fiber. Bowel movement should not be painful, right? It shouldn't be straining. So, you know, you, you're looking at hemorrhoids, that sort of thing. You don't want, you know, that's that's not normal. So, Unless you're so, pregnant. Right? Yes. No. Well, can be and <laughs> no. ho- not that I hopefully have temporary. <laughs> yes. So you are what you do not poop. P- yes. A poop du jour. <laughs> right. So make sure you know, make sure that's moving out. Get a so, squatty potty. That's have right. Have a poop du jour. Have yep. some fiber. Yep. <laughs> water, s- right? So water and fiber make the colon happy. A little spily colon down there. Yeah. So another moment of ecstasy on the part of my husband on our trip to Thailand was he <laughs> <laughs> it was a really sexy trip. Oh I yeah. Tell. Oh yeah. We went to this uh like flower market. It was incredible. There were lemon trees and nice. it was so wonderful. But he went to this bathroom, which in Thailand is almost always just a hole that yeah. you squat over. Yeah. And he was in there a little while and he comes out and he's like, I've never had a shit like that before. <laughs> crap i've ever had wow. he talked about it for days and he went and got a squatty lucky potty you. right yeah lucky me that's right i would love to get a squatty potty you're so tall it's just like a squatty potty every you're, time <laughs> my knees you are know up what, around my ears your <laughs> toilet's actually pretty short mel i've yeah. noticed yeah I, it's one of those things you know when you go to sit on someone else's toilet and it's shorter or taller it's a bit of a surprise mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i always like slam down on mel's we have a potty. squatty potty and it's basically just a stool that goes in front of the toilet yeah. so i mean you could do that by elevating around. your feet which promote that posture, right? Which, yeah. which the squat, like if you're the seeing floor. your baby, yeah. like you, yeah. mm-hmm. squirt that poop right out of them. So, yeah. so Sarah, elevate your feet. Elevate your you're feet. There. That's right. Uh, I also wanted to mention if you have red poop and you panic, don't panic. Check if you had beets the day before. Yes, I can't tell you how many <laughs> fucking times I've been like, oh my god. Oh right. Beats or had to send texts to my friends to be like, hey guys, just an FYI, remember we had beats for dinner yesterday after a dinner party? Because everyone has that moment of panic when yes. they look in the toilet. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> All right, what's our next question? Um, well, we had uh, a couple of people asking about psoriasis and other autoimmune issues and wondering if there are any dietary measures that are generally good for autoimmune dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, autoimmune, certainly it's right. There's inflammation happening, right? So whether it's your joints um, or the skin uh, or an organ like colitis, things like that. So, you know, uh, we want to promote anti-inflammatory foods. So one of the, a couple of the best ones are 
omega-3 fats, so from fish, so from oh, right. oily, um, ocean-going fish, so sardines, mackerel, herring, uh, wild-caught salmon, not farmed. Arctic char, if you're if you're mm. up in the north, oh right? Oh my that god, if you're so lucky, oily Arctic <gasps> char, it's lovely. So though the fat from those kinds of fish, um, superb anti-inflammatory because our body changes it in what's called a prostaglandin, an anti-inflammatory prostaglandin. One of the other best, you know, plant medicines for inflammation that ha- that's probably the most studied plant medicine on earth of all time is turmeric. Fantastic, again, anti-inflammatory properties, and it works in a multitude of ways. How could you, uh, like if I wanted to start consuming turmeric, I eat a curry maybe once every two weeks, Mm -hmm. so that's not much. Mm -hmm. How would I have that daily? Well, I mean, if you're cooking rice, you can put a couple spoonfuls of that and, you know, turns your rice kind of a nice A beautiful yellow. yellow. Um, You know, if you're making a smoothie, Say you could put like a spoonful of that in because it's not um, super highly flavorful. No, turmeric. it's it's kind of bland. Uh, it's not spicy at all. It's not hot or anything. You don't want to just mix it in water, and that's not that pleasant. And the thing with turmeric is you need you need it with fat. It's it's got like fat soluble, okay. so you don't just want to mix it in water and chug it down. But if you had a smoothie, say, and if you were adding fish oil or coconut oil or something like that, right? You've got that fat component. Okay, and also something that's synergistic that improves the absorption is a little bit of black pepper at the same time you're oh. taking turmeric. It enhances the, the bioavailability. So oh, that can be really great. Um, can you just quickly let me know some um, foods that would be specifically inflammatory, like something that you'd want to maybe try to steer clear of if you have a autoimmune Sure. Uh, well, um, uh, processed fats, so margarine, right? Hydrogenated fats, okay. which are my pet peeve in life. <laughs> My pet peeve is when you go to a fucking potluck, okay? It's already bad enough that you're going to a potluck. I'm going somewhere for dinner. I have to bring dinner? Yeah. I have four kids. My pet peeve. (laughs) No, potlucks are awful. I just throw them all the time because I don't want to make food for everybody. It's too many people to cook for. I throw them all the time too and I fucking hate them. (laughs) So my pet peeve is when you go to a potluck. And you're so fucking hungry and Mm -hmm. all you want is some protein and always someone makes chili, right? Like you can count on fucking chili at a potluck. Throw it down. Yeah. You go, you fill your bowl up with that sweet, sweet protein filled chili. Mmm. Take your first big bite. Yeah. (laughs) You know what it is? (laughs) What? It's texturized vegetable protein. Oh. It's fucking vegan chili. Right. You know what? Fuck you. I want some goddamn chili. And the problem is it's a potluck. So you have this whole bowl. What are you going to do? You can't throw it out at the potluck. That's true. Like you have to eat it or just casually leave it somewhere. You can't just leave TVP lying around, Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) TVPDP? (laughs) I don't recommend DP after TVP. (laughs) Ew. Okay, so my pet peeve is when I send someone an email and they reply either hi, Melody, spelled with an I-E. Okay, okay. Or Melanie. That's not your name. That's not my name. That's not my name. That's say not my, my name. name. Say my name. <laughs> when no one is around me, say, baby, baby I love I you. I love you. <laughs> you ain't running, running games. And super name. lame. Super lame. All right, Melanie. Well, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. This is Melanie and Sasha (laughs) signing off. Sasha out. (laughs) Too much uh, red meat and too much dairy um, can become pro-inflammatory. Those foods contain another kind of fatty acid called arachidonic acid, which again, in excess, starts to become an inflammatory byproduct in our bodies. Sounds like a dinosaur. Yes. <laughs> just just got to say. <laughs> Arachidonic. Arachidonic acid. Yes. <laughs> Rawr. I'm a Arachid- <laughs> I'm Arachidonicsaurus, and I'm Rawr. an inflammatory dinosaur. Ooh, inflame. <laughs> it's so hot. Oh. I'm going to say something inflammatory. <laughs> <Rawr>. <laughs> All pterodactyls belong in the kitchen. Triceratops are all boneheads. (laughs) So inflammatory.
<laughs> um, but in general, fruits and vegetables, you know, the vegetable kingdom, anti-inflammatory. All right. Processed foods, you know, too much animal foods, more potentially pro-inflammatory. Okay. Right. Except for oily fish. Never see an inflamed deer. You right. Know? Mm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So while we're still on the topic of um, autoimmune issues can we talk seasonal allergies for a moment sure it's springtime yeah yeah i get the allergies real bad i've never been tested so i don't know what it is exactly but it seems to be seasonal and dust and mold and kind of like the regular stuff so i'm just wondering if you have any recommendations on day-to-day things i can do to prevent um allergy Mm -hmm. attacks it's in the sinuses for me. Okay. So generally what's happening is there's, you know, our immune system's a bit out of balance. But typically with an allergy, eczema, asthma kind of picture, there's like an overdrive of what we call a TH2. So anyway, we want to balance that, that aspect of the immune system. So f- I guess, first of all, uh, if you can limit, you know, or modify your exposure right, to the pollens or the mold or whatever. So just making sure if you have central heating or whatever, change the furnace filters, you know, fairly Mm. frequently, and you can get some really, you know, more expensive uh, ones that can but filter out very, very tiny pollen particles, Um, getting like an air purifier maybe for your bedroom, at Mm -hmm. least keeping the door closed. So you're at least creating a bubble there where, you know, if you're spending eight hours a day, at least that part is clean, you know, getting rid of carpets, that sort of thing, if if you're allergic more to dust. So, uh, do you like onions? No, she hates, she hates onions. onions. It's oh. the only thing she hates, and really? she hates them. Oh wow! It's okay. like a thing. Cancel if they're that. if they're cooked and mushy, yeah. and I can't see them or crunch them. Okay, she's getting a bit better. Okay, I'm getting better. Right, but I really don't like them. It's funny okay. that you say that because it's like the big it's thing. Mm-hmm. That melts. Okay. Um, well, anyway, onions are very rich in a in a what's called a flavonoid called quercetin. Right. So it's basically a chemical. It's in every plant and it okay. protects the plant from like solar radiation, but it acts as an antihistamine in our bodies. So Ooh. it sort of stabilizes our cells so they don't blow up that histamine reaction and cause the symptoms. Right? Are this- you telling me I've done this to myself by excluding <laughs> onions from my diet? Well, as long, <laughs> as, your fault. as long as you're eating lots of other colorful veggies, then it's okay. But <laughs> onions are, you know, are one are you know, just particularly high in it. So somebody mentioned neti pot. Mm-hmm. Right. Mel hates You're not, the neti pot. You hate the neti pot. So, I mean, what a neti pot is, is like a teapot with water and you pour it in one nostril and the water comes out the other. So right. you're basically rinsing, physically rinsing the inside of the nasal passages and, and the sinuses. So, I mean, that can be useful if you can tolerate it because, you know, pollens and things are, are you know, landing on our mucous membranes and then triggering kind of this downstream mm-hmm. immune response. So if you're washing that off before it can happen on a regular basis that can have an impact in, in just mitigating some of this with the neti pot, mm-hmm. just a technical question. Mm-hmm. Can you use tap water? Do you need to boil it? You don't need to boil it oh, as long don't. as it's safe. So don't water. take swamp water. Don't take swamp water. Okay. You no, know, you always need the little packets it comes with like the salt and bicarbonate mix, which sort of buffers it. Okay. Now, if you want to get really fancy, you can start putting little drops of herbal medicine in, which have, um, uh, again, anti-inflammatory kind of mucous membrane tonic uh, functions. So oh. this is great. Going back to the you child and daycare, you wouldn't necessarily, you know, a five-year-old might not want to do a neti pot, but you know, anyone who's frequently exposed to germs and and gets sick a lot, mm-hmm. a neti pot's a good idea again to wash the germs off. And if you put some uh, antibacterial herbs in, just a few drops that can make a huge difference. See, I could get into that. So then you're, you're yeah. med- you know, you're actually medicating the neti pot. So it's not just a saline rinse anymore, but you can be smart about it and just make it a little Give it that little extra, um, extra kick. Yeah. You had Mel it fancy. Yeah. Right. Get fancy. Get fancy. <laughs> Let's do, do it. Do my nails. Load up the neti pot. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. Mel's the fanciest gal I know. It's a spa day. <laughs> We always do, go to do the podcast and I come into the basin and Mel's got like lipstick and a beautiful outfit and her hair is gorgeous and I'm wearing a jumpsuit, <laughs> <laughs> but I put my earrings in. So yeah. yeah. Boom. Yeah. You look great. Thanks. You look like a million dollars today, Sarah. <gasps> so a million you. dollars. Thanks. I'm not wearing a jumpsuit. So you don't need the jumpsuit. I don't need the jumpsuit. <laughs> But I've been known to wear a jumpsuit once or twice. Jumpsuit, jumpsuit, a mechanics jumpsuit, jumps, jumpsuit, work jumpsuit, 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 a jumpsuit, 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 jumpsuit.
That's my security blanket, my jumpsuit. <laughs> oh my god, put me in a jumpsuit. Sean, yes. I I know you do acupuncture. Mm-hmm. You were just talking about it. Um, I was wondering. I know some people are are a little bit nervous about acupuncture. They don't really know what it entails, or they just know like needles. Ah, mm-hmm. what would you tell people about acupuncture? Maybe who are a bit nervous about the idea of it. Okay, well, if someone was What's you know, it like? maybe wanting to try it, but was nervous or had a needle phobia, that's mm-hmm. understandable. Um, so I tell them, well, first of all, it's the insertion of very, very fine, like almost hair thickness needles. So you can't feel it. Well, really, you, there's a little sensation, but it's not like that painful poke, like getting a blood draw or okay. at the dentist. So far from it, much, much less, you know, distressful. So what I say is you might feel a little pinch as the needle's inserted, and they're, by the way, sterile, single-use needles always. Right. Okay, so there's no, um, no risk of infection. A little, uh, a little pinch, and then sometimes you get just a sensation, like a zing, I call it, a little yeah. bit of an electrical buzz that might radiate you know, for, for a millisecond, or kind of a little um, pressure, like someone's just gently applying pressure with a fingertip. I found that sensation really like exciting. It, it's not like a an ouchy zing no, no. or anything. It was just like, oh, so this then, is doing something, right? Like, and then, um, I mean, that's about it as far as you know the immediate physical impact of the needle. So if someone's like, I really want to try acupuncture for my back pain. I hear it's great. My friend had it, um, but I'm nervous about needles. You know, you can always insert one needle just right. for. 30 seconds, right? So you experience it and get over the, the unknown, right? Fear. Generally, it's very well tolerated and um, it's a whole system of medicine. I mean, it can treat anything, you know, mental, emotional, physical, it doesn't matter what the condition is. It's um, very versatile and then you can do multiple things at once. And one of its great advantages is, is you're not putting anything into the body. So it's not going to interact with medications mm-hmm. or anything like that. My mom had terrible migraines for years and mm-hmm. years and had some acupuncture in it straight up cured her. She never had a migraine again after a wow. series of treats, treatments. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's not just physical, you know, sure. You can put a, you know, acupuncture needles where it hurts, so mm-hmm. whether it's a headache or shoulder pain or whatever. Um, but again, with longer treatment, you're treating the susceptibility. So a headache mm-hmm. that would have a certain pattern behind it. That's, that's causing that manifestation. So you're addressing that with acupuncture. I wanted to just quick mention another thing about uh, naturopathic medicine or maybe it's just Sean. <laughs> I've I've been seeing Sean for ten years, guys. Just FYI. But um, coming in to your office and uh, even just having someone sit down and genuinely care about your health and ask you pointed questions, like you know, you, for my experience with going into the doctor's office, my family doctors, when you go in, you say what's wrong with you, they write you a prescription or send you for a test and s- send you on your way. And it, you don't feel great afterwards. And I find coming here um, not only like a helpful health benefit, but emotionally, like just having someone listen to you and care about you, uh, it's just, you don't really find that anywhere else. And it just is such a big difference having that. Like it's just something that you don't get from other uh, healthcare practitioners, I find. Well, thank you. Well, sure. And a couple of things at that point is, well, you know, we're not, we're not in the OHIP system, mm-hmm. right? So I spend two hours with an adult the first time they come to see me. So we have the luxury of time, right? Mm-hmm. To, to get into the history and health history and emotional, you know, mental, emotional history. And that's very important. Um, you know, it's important for me to know for health, but then we can discuss things. And um, so we have that luxury of time, which, you know, the medical system it's not you know, no that time. they're uncaring people, but the system's set up for five, seven, ten minute visits. Yeah. So you know you can't cover you know nearly the same amount of things and get into that detail, right? Um, yeah, that's you know one thing. But genuinely, you know, those just talking about you know feelings, emotions, uh, you know, connection with things, your personal relationships. You know that's going to impact your health, so it's yeah. you know it's um, it's important to have that discussion to to get you feeling better. But certainly, just that interaction can be therapeutic in itself. Sometimes, right? absolutely, I, I find it every time. Sorry, you're also my therapist, Sean. It's okay. <laughs> Best friend, therapist. I forget what the third thing was. Well, you're his mentor. So. I'm yeah, I'm your mentor. My mentor and cool. You're, so. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this is so great. Sarah wore a leather jacket here. She did. I did. It's 
leather. I like to call it vegan <laughs> leather. So it's not that I'm poor. It's that I'm like conscientious. Yeah. But it's not vegan leather. It's like plastic material that's made in China. I mean, it's vegan leather. <clears throat> vegan leather. Moving on. You wear it well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wear a good jacket. Swing. So uh, one of our listeners, Pat, says... I'm really wanting to go see a naturopath, but it's out of my price range. How can we make it more accessible? I feel it's so important to support alternative medicine. How do we do this? Just another point on top of that yeah. that adds to this question is both my husband and my mother-in-law asked the same question. Um, is there any uh, time in the future that we can see it being covered under OHIP? That's just the second part of okay. that. Um, so that's a, uh, that's a great question. Um, so, I mean, naturopathic services are not, are not covered in the public health system, just like, you know, 24 of the 26 regulated health professions are not. Um, so, yeah, cost can be a barrier for sure. Now, I mean, a few ways around it, you know, that I've explored is, you know, having um, a sliding scale. So if someone's motivated to come in, really wants my help, you know, I'm not going to turn them away for lack of ability to pay we'll say okay so what you know what can you afford what works for you um then there's ways to kind of modulate the follow-ups you know just make things short and sweet and compact so Mm -hmm. that minimizes cost you know going forward you have a thing in your practice where you actually do phone appointments sometimes well as a a follow-up right so once i've met the person then then you know if it's just an acute issue you know um sometimes you know that can be appropriate right um, you know, or just, you know, 15 or even 10 minute follow-ups. Mm-hmm. If, you know, I, you can email me the report in advance. We sort of get right to it, you know, you're not yeah. wasting time. And so that minimizes cost for sure. Um, but some other models that are, you know, currently out there is something called community acupuncture. So we talk about, you know, acupuncture. Um, but there's this movement globally where you can have acupuncture that's provided in a group setting. So on a drop-in basis, and often okay. it's a sliding scale, usually $25 to $40 price range. And you're just set up in kind of reclining chairs, you know, with a blanket. And generally the points are done on hands and feet. Chairs are arranged in a circle or whatever. And is there one acupuncturist? One, Yeah, there, one or, or two, one but or basically two. one going from person to person, you know, just on our, with a rolly chair. Wow, does that ever sound like a great idea? Jeez, Mel, my understanding of that is... Dr. Sean, are your acupuncturist? Acupuncturist? Your actual acupuncturist (laughs) is on a spinny chair flinging needles Mm -hmm. (laughs) at your feet. His arms or her arms are like windmills. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. You know, you just have you have a brief little chat and sort of say, what are you here for? And, you know, acupuncture works best when it's done in a sequence, right? Mm-hmm. In a series of treatments. So this really reduces the price range. So that's, that's sort of a model that's out there. Um, it's not one I offer yet, but I hope to very, very soon in Kemville. So then, you know, I put the question back to, to anyone, you know, wondering about this is, you know, what ideas do you have or what would work? Let's have a conversation that that's, that's very important, but we're, we're not covered by OHIP. Now the question is, you know, will it be covered? Like, sure, it'd be nice if that, that came along. So now yeah. OHIP covers, you know, obviously medical doctors, uh, hospital care, uh, midwifery, which is great. And I think vision care for kids. They do, up yeah. Up to now. 12 or 18, mm-hmm. right? And as far as I know, that's about it. So I just looked at the Ontario budget yesterday and healthcare is 38% the budget uh 61 billion dollars this year and the the baby boomer wave is just hitting 70 like right. last year was the first baby boomer hit 70 so you've got this 20 year cohort just you know starting things are to about their, to get crazy their elderly years when most that's when the most intense healthcare spending right occurs mm-hmm. um the older you get so basically there's there's no money to expand that like forget it. That's not so. Don't happen. wait around for don't your, your breath for OHIP to cover it. No, in the foreseeable future. No, because so far the trend is backwards, right? Pulling away right. from things, and 
I mean, it doesn't cover even dental care, right? Yeah, it's so, insane. So, for example, someone who can't afford dental care, right? They get a toothache, they wait, you know, when it gets extreme, where do they go? The emergency room. Yeah. That costs so hip $600 just walking into the door of a hospital emergency room. Um, is, then what are they given? Oh, painkiller for your toothache because they're not experts in dentistry, right? And so then you go home, maybe it dulls the pain a little bit. What happens a week later? Now you got an abscess that's actually yeah. infected. There's like a big ball of pus on your gum. So you're back in there. Maybe you're given an antibiotic. You're not fixing the person's dental problem. And it's probably, that's probably not the only tooth. That's yeah. So anyway, back another 600 bucks to the system. So is that cheaper than, you know, say covering at least 500 bucks a year for every person in Ontario? I don't know. Like emergency visits even? Right. So, yeah. I mean, that's just one example. That's, I would love know, to go to the dentist. Yeah. I wouldn't love to go to the dentist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. So, there, you know, I'd say there's even more urgent priorities if that were to happen. I'd say, mm-hmm. well, cover dentistry first and then, you know, cover us down the road. Yeah. But, um, no, that's not the case. So we need to figure things out. Do so you think it's it would be true. worthwhile for people like Pat who want to explore um, naturopathic medicine but feel like they can't afford it to just reach out to Sure. Uh, yeah, just call and say, and, look, here's my situation. And, you know, I'm... Um, that's, you know, that's fine. I'm open to that. I'm flexible. I let people wait six months to pay, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, whatever works like that's. Yeah. I remember once not coming in for a long time, like it was like six months or something and things had gone really downhill and I finally came in uh, and I couldn't wait any longer. And he said, Sarah, why didn't you come earlier? And I said, I, I can't afford it, Sean. And he said, I never want that to be a reason that you're not coming in for help. Like, don't ever let that. You know, and it was so, I like bawled the whole way home because you're like, oh my God, somebody cares. <laughs> so great. Okay, this guy needs coffee and cruelers stat. So we had a question submitted anonymously. Our first anonymous question. Woo. Woo, woo. And it goes, you asked for relationship questions. <laughs> yeah, we did. Who's the doctor with all the tips? For your hot relationships. Sean. Yeah. Sean. Who? Dr. Sean. Sean and on. Yeah. yeah. Here's a lack of relationship question. Seeking advice on being single in the country. How to meet people when you live in a small town or community and didn't grow up there. And if you're going back to the city to find a partner, how to find someone who's interested in moving out to the country. Also... Do you know any single men around Perth? Swing. <laughs> if you're a single man in Perth area, write to Teach Me Tiger because we want to hook you up with Anonymous. <laughs> she, he's a hot lady or man. I mean, I have some ideas. Do you, should I start? I think you should. Okay. So my thoughts are definitely internet date because if you're an adult – in a small town, you're probably not going to the bars every night, which is what we might have done in our early 20s. Yeah. <laughs> might be what I spent all of OSAP on. <laughs> going to the bars. Or like smoking outside of the dorm. Take up smoking. That's a great way to meet people. <laughs> but uh, you're going to meet smokers. So yeah. maybe don't. Yeah. yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone internet dates anyway nowadays. But I would say definitely take to the internet and don't be afraid to date people from outside of Perth. If you're living in a small town, definitely don't be afraid to date. <laughs> well, we knew someone who was on Tinder who was saying that there was like one man on Tinder yeah, in Perth. It was Perth. in a committed relationship. With I remember a child, that actually. Yeah, and everybody knows that about him because it's Perth, small town. Uh huh. Everybody knows where he works. I'm not going to name names. No names. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, don't be afraid to go outside of Perth. I'm, I assume you probably drive a car if you're living in the country. So use your car. <laughs> use your car. Um, Get out of town. And everybody falls in love with Perth anyway. Perth is so sweet and great. Yeah. I had uh, my um, my tip. I yeah. really agree with that. I think leave fucking Perth. Go to the city. Go to shows. Go to things that you're interested in. Yeah. Make sure that like just say you're interested in, uh, you know, I don't know. Throw me a bone, guys. <laughs> Scrapbooking. Irish dancing. World War II memorabilia. Scuba diving. Norwegian death metal. Photography. Taxidermy. Embalming. Swing dancing. Haunted doll collecting. 
uh, What's a thing? Natural living. Just so you're interested in natural living, seek out natural living events and go to them. Go on the internet. Check what's going on. What's going on in Ottawa? What's going on in Kingston? What's going on in Toronto? Yeah. Go to things that you enjoy so then you'll meet someone who presumably enjoys those things. Also, people in the city uh, are often quite taken with the uh, country life. Well, the country life, but also you can't, no one can afford property in Toronto anymore. Yeah. You know, it's like a cool million dollars for a crappy duplex at like DuPont and Davenport or whatever. I don't know what that means. Well, I do. So that's all that matters, right? Don't go there. (laughs) Um, But that's part of why my husband and I moved out here. And he's from Toronto. He's from the GTA. He came out here because he could afford to buy property and have a family, (laughs) you know? You can Um, also hang out outside Algonquin College. I don't know if you guys have ever been there, but my husband went to school there and it's filled with handsome, young, strapping men doing construction-y things. Showing. Sometimes they're all outside with axes, axing huge giant logs, (laughs) wearing work boots (laughs) and tool belts, girl, tool belts. Just saying, go to Algonquin College. Damn. Well, actually, they they host events. There are events that happen around Perth, too. So Algonquin just had a tiny home festival. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. That might be a cool place to meet people. Uh, There's the distillery in Perth now. Um, Yeah, meet people at the distillery. Well, no, but they have events. They have events with music and drinks and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Gotta get out. Oh, and I know. The other thing I was going to say is figure out who your friend is in your circle who loves to set people up because there's one in every circle of friends. And they will hook you up. It might be awkward, but who cares? One yeah. might stick, right? One might stick. What about you, Sean? Do you have any tips? Dating tips? Well, we're all in committed relationships. <laughs> Sucks. Harkening back to my prairie roots, right? You know, in the old days, and even now, there's a publication called the Western Producer, right? So it's like a farm publication out of yeah. Saskatchewan, and there's a classified section. Oh my god! You know, like farmer looking for wife. Oh, you sweet put an ad in the Western Jesus. Producer. Just put an ad in and the And it's like only rural people read that. That so sounds like a way to like, not find someone. Like, Well, you know, they might be into moving to Perth, but, you know, they've got yeah. the rural thing going on already, so you don't have to convince them of that. Yeah, there you go. I like, anyway, I like it. Tried and true. Tried and true. Put an ad in the newspaper. Put an ad in the newspaper, but, you know, the Western I Producer. I saw you walking down the street. You had on a yellow shirt. I think you uh, saw me. Or just, you know, Lonely Farmer Seeks. Seeks wife. Yeah. That sounds like someone I want to date. Puts an <laughs> ad in the paper. Lonely <laughs> Farmer Seeks wife. Well, sounds like a winner gone young. <laughs> so, Sean, you grew up in the country? Um, by and large. Yes, mm-hmm. I would say so. Yep. What brought you out here? Um, um, my wife got a job in Kempville. So that brought us from Ottawa to Kempville. But um, I was in Toronto going to school prior to Ottawa, uh, Vancouver for two years prior to Toronto, and Montreal prior to that. Oh my God! And I was born in BC man of the and, world. and lived in Edmonton too. So. No way, way. Yeah. Who's the mentor now, Sarah? Oh damn it! It was not for me. <laughs> um, I lived in Gatineau, and then I lived in Vanier, and then I lived in the Ottawa Valley. So, fucking. Check that out, okay? <laughs> Classy. That's where oh, I get no, all my. You're very class worldly. You know from. all the things. I do. All of them. <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I think we're we've covered our questions. We I can hardly questions. believe it. Okay. We did it. Great. Well done, Sean. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wealth of knowledge. and Thanks for having me. And, you know, Sean was talking a little bit about being like our Dr. Oz. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, it would be so cool if people could write in questions every once in a while and we could give you a shout and be like, hey, Dr. Sean, help us out. Answers and questions, sure. It would be so much I'd fun. Love that, yeah. Could we call you <laughs> Dr. Shadizzle? Oh, no. No, <laughs> no I'm not. I'm going to say no. No, okay. <laughs> oh, I have a joke, though. That's cool. That's cool. What? Why does Snoop Dogg carry an umbrella? The drizzle. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. How does Snoop Dogg get his whites brighter? 
Hell. Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Your turn, Sean. No. <laughs> Anything? Any no. Snoop Dogg? <laughs> no. All right. All right. Um, Sean, where yes. can we find you? Uh, on the internet, www.kempvillenaturopathic.com or uh, facebook.com slash kempvillenaturopathic. And I uh, post events and news and cool little health-related articles. And events like uh, building up your immune system. Yeah, things. I do, you know, in the fall, flu prevention workshops, yeah. in the spring, um, how to make your own calendula healing salve, Yay. for example. We love that. Um, I do herb walks in the summer. Oh, the you Ferguson do? Forest Center. Yeah, every year we do an annual herb walk at the Forest Center, usually in mid to late July. So you can watch Facebook. It gets posted on there. Cool. And, uh, you know, if anyone in the local area has, you know, a pasture or a forest or a property and wants a herbal medicine audit of their uh, plants growing there, then you can give me a call. And I've done that before. And oh, that's, that's so cool. That's a lot of fun. You get a group of people together and we go for a little stroll and talk about what's growing there and what, what you can use them for and things like that. So That's a really neat idea. I would say to our yeah. listener that she should do stuff like that. Follow yeah. Sean on Facebook. Follow Sean on Facebook, and then you'll meet people going on herbal medicine audit walks. And then, yeah, they're popular boom. events. So this oh, last really year, I think we had thirty people or more, and people from the city were there too. Ooh, that's yeah. what you need to get. You need to get yourself a city boy and bring him out to the country. <laughs> yeah, we need more fresh blood. Fresh blood. Yeah. Fresh blood. Um, we Sarah. You can find me on Facebook. I'm Sarah Wright, uh, and Instagram. At little right crew dot art 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 <laughs> art every, every time, time. <laughs> every time every fucking time find me on Instagram I'm making art <laughs> yeah again that's so amazing. that's fun so are you where okay. can we find you uh, Melody Starkweather dot ca I realize that I I drop that plug every episode and I never say what I do I'm a painter she's a oh, painter great. she's amazing mm-hmm. oh thank you I was amazing too I think you're amazing. Yeah. No, you're, you're amazing, amazing too, Sean. You're amazing, Sean. No, you're amazing. <laughs> no, you no, hang you out. Are. No, you hang <laughs> out. You are. No, you are. <laughs> um, and find the show at www.teachmetigerpodcast.ca. Uh, please subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. The links are all on the site. And um, Check out our site. It's so boss. It's pretty cool. And do us a solid if you like the show. Please, please, please rate and review it in iTunes. It helps us out and makes the show more visible. Yeah, it helps us. So give us some stars, okay? Just give us five stars. You know what? Even if you're not listening, (laughs) how can you hear me? (laughs) Give us some stars. Five stars. 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 (laughs) (laughs) Um, And send us uh, any and all questions about anything and everything, and we'll try to answer them. Yeah, we want more rando questions. Get us some juicy questions. I want some juicy questions. And now we have our in-house Dr. Sean. Send some questions for Dr. Sean. Cool. Cool. Uh, Tune in next time for two very foxy experts on tiny homes and ecological living. Bridget O'Flaherty and Megan Robinson. Woo-boo. What about your babes? Swing. Tiny Uh, home babes. I think people who can manage living with less, it makes people who can't really consider living with less, you know, it's challenging for them and it's threatening, you know, because it's challenging that, that status quo. And so instead of trying to understand why someone could make do with less and have that be okay and celebrate it even, you know, it's just sort of dismissed Mm -hmm. or worse. Yeah. Well, in North American culture and society of our you know first world country that we are, you know, third world countries, uh, there's tiny living everywhere, you know, in multiple yeah. families, in small buildings. And, you know, who who do we think we are? Mm-hmm. Now, let's see what Greg has to say on the topic of naturopathy. Greg, 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 Greg says some stuff. All right. I'd like to know how come whenever alternative medicine is discussed in the mainstream, especially in contrast to the modern medical establishment. Invariably, it's framed in an adversarial context, as if the different schools of medicine were, in essence, mutually exclusive, or that one, by virtue of its mere existence, posed a grave threat to the other's survival and credibility. I don't know who, if anyone, is served by perpetuating this antagonism. Surely a more diverse medical system could only benefit the people. 
we need a conversation about cooperation and integration and consider first and foremost the needs of the patient. What about investing in preventative medicine and bringing it under the umbrella of public health care? Give the people access to healing and wellness that doesn't require a trip to the pharmacy. Is it unreasonable to imagine that if more resources were available, it might actually alleviate some of the stress on our health care system? Stress that threatens to make health care so unfeasible, so inadequate, and so disappointing that privatization of the whole industry would be the only option. Is it unreasonable to think we might see more free beds in hospitals? Shorter wait times for treatment, no more crammed emergency rooms, or strung out overworked healthcare professionals. I don't know, but it's worth a try. There are probably some of us who find alternative medicine ambiguous or too intangible, as there are others who find the establishment invasive and destructive. It's worthwhile thinking not only about the various mechanisms at work in either medical system, but also the nature of the machine itself. These considerations might guide us to find ways of making both streams of medicine more effective and ultimately more accessible. That was great, Greg. It's Greg. Greg. Thanks, Greg. We'll share it on social media if you want to weigh in. Thanks again for joining us. We love you. We love you so much. And remember, tigers, it's It's a jungle jungle out out there. there. Rawr! That might have been the best one yet. That was the best one. So good. Teach me, Tiger, how to tease you. That's what she said.